The government has allocated 50 million ringgit for individuals, including graduates, who are keen to start a home-based food business under the Pamuli New Base Financing Programme. Prime Minister Dato Sri Ismail Sabri Yaakob said the financing programme through Agrobank was also for the purchase of machines for food business or the purchase of motorcycles for the purpose of food delivery through the e-hailing platform. Sesungguhnya, pertanian itu adalah kehidupan. Datuk Sri Ismail Sabri also said the government through Murphy would introduce the agri-food takaful insurance scheme involving the entire agri-food sector as part of the measures to strengthen the country's food security system. Yang bakal memanfaatkan seramai 189,500 pesawah padi sebelum diperluaskan secara berperingkat kepada sektor lain seperti perikanan, tanaman dan subsektor industri makanan lain. Skim ini bertujuan mengurangkan implikasi keuangan akibat kehilangan hasil tanaman berikutan berlakunya bencana seperti banjir dan kemarau serta gangguan wabak penyakit. The Premier added that the scheme would also ensure that paddy farmers will get compensation in the event of disruptions to the country's rice production due to national disasters or disease outbreaks. He added that Mafi, through Agrobank, had also allocated 800 million ringgit to the agriculture community under the Kuala Malaysia Agro Food Financing Fund to increase the country's food production. Meanwhile, Dato Sri Ismail Sabri said the intervention measures taken by the government to ensure the security of food supply have paid off as chicken prices are now lower than the ceiling price of 9 ringgit and 40 cent per kilogram. He said the intervention measures included abolishing the approved permit AP, halting chicken exports and creating buffer stock for chicken and fish. Despite the disruption of the world's food supply chain, Dr. Sri Ismail Sabri said the government remains committed to managing the lack of food supply despite facing various constraints. Saya pernah mengisahkan jihad memerangi orang tengah pada tahun 2014 ketika meneraju Kementerian Pertanian dan Industri Asas Tani kerana tindakan orang tengahlah yang mengeksploitasi petani dan nelayan dengan manipulasi harga di pasaran. Through the measures, the Premier said the government for the first time provided subsidies amounting to 1.1 billion ringgit to chicken breeders to ease their burden as well as to ensure sufficient supply of chicken and eggs and guarantee price stability among others. On another note, Dato Sri Ismail Sabri Yaakob declared an all-out war against middlemen and cartels responsible for the rise in the prices of essential goods and inflation. Kerajaan berusaha menangani manipulasi orang tengah dan kewujudan kartel dalam sektor pertanian dan rangkaian bekalan makanan yang menyebabkan kenaikan harga barang dan inflasi. Malam, MYCC ataupun Suranjaya Persaingan Malaysia telah mengeluarkan keputusan cadangan terhadap lima perusahaan makanan ternakan yang bersekongkol dalam menaikkan harga makanan ayam. Ini amaran kerajaan terhadap mana-mana kartel yang cuba memanipulasi harga dan pasaran. It was reported yesterday that MyCC found five companies engaging in anti-competitive conduct, which included increasing the price of poultry feed. It said these companies were suspected to have engaged in such acts between early 2020 and the middle of this year. 
Cooperatives. Cooperatives can be used as a medium to fight middlemen who try to take excessive profits. Special Task Force on Jihad Against Inflation Chairman Chan Sri Anwar Musa said the move would shorten the supply chain from manufacturers to retailers, which had caused the prices of goods to increase. Mana ada kaedah direct daripada producers, uh, packers, uh, macam yang diberikan pada koperasi, mereka dibenarkan import uh, gula, mereka akan dibenarkan untuk membuat packaging kepada paket yang kecil dan mereka boleh terus mengedar uh, sebagai retailers uh, melalui rangkaian kedai-kedai koperasi. Met after inspecting the prices of goods at a supermarket in Laga, he added cooperatives had also gave an assurance that their prices will be 15 to 20 percent lower than the current prices. Meanwhile, Tan Sri Anwar said he was satisfied to see some supermarkets have been gone lowering the price of bottled cooking oil, even though the price ceiling for the non-subsidized goods will only come into effect on Monday. He expressed hope other chain stores will be able to do the same. The government has yet to set a date to lift the ban on chicken exports. Domestic Trade and Consumer Affairs Minister Datuk Sri Alexander Nantalingi, however, said the matter had been previously discussed by the Cabinet. Datuk Sri Nanta said any decision on the matter must take into account the interest of all parties. Uh, kita ada fahamkan ayam lebih-lebih lagi sudah uh, uh, berlebihan lah. Sebab itu walaupun ada harga maksima uh, RM9.41 kilo, kita dapat uh, maklumat banyak tempat sudah uh, menjual harga ayam 1 kilo di pasaran jauh lebih rendah daripada harga yang ditetapkan. On 4th of August, Agriculture and Food Industries Minister Datuk Sri Ronald Kiandi said the ban on the export of commercial broilers that was still in effect was temporary, namely until the price and production of chickens fully stabilise. He said the government was aware of the increase in the cost of chicken production following the increase in the cost of animal feed and the cessation of exports affecting the returns of breeders. In this regard, he said the government agreed to give subsidies to broiler chicken and egg-laying chicken breeders, amounting to 1.1 billion ringgit in total to ease their burden. Coming up, legalization process of school and to ease future planning. The Ministry of Education, MOE, is carrying out the process of legalisation or ownership transfer of school land from state governments to the Department of Director General of Lands and Mines, JKPTG, to its future planning of school infrastructure. Senior Education Minister Dato Dr. Razi Jidin said the issue of the delay in the previous school construction project was due to the land acquisition process, which took so long. Apabila dapat peruntukan untuk dilaksanakan pembinaan sekolah semak-semak tapaknya masih belum milik JKPTG maka proses pertukaran itu cukup lama. Sebab itu sekarang kita mengambil ini baru satu ya tindakan proaktif di mana kita buat pemutihan tanah-tanah kita. Kita ingin pastikan selepas ini semua tanah ini adalah tanah milik JKPTG, milik kerajaan on Wednesday, the Auditor General's report 2021 Series 1 stated that the management of school construction projects between 2016 and 2021 under the 11th Malaysia Plan, 11 MP including extension projects, was less efficient and less effective. The report said that the coordination problems between the state governments, local authorities, PBT and utility companies, as well as the issue of project site availability also contributed to the delay in the project. Therefore, Dr. Dr. Razi said his ministry is working with PBT to ensure that school construction problems, including abandoned ones, can be implemented immediately and do not affect the development of the country's education infrastructure. A total of 1,802 entities, including companies, non-governmental organisations, 
government agencies, government-linked companies and ministries have signed the Corruption-Free Pledge with the Malaysian Anti-Corruption Commission, MACC. MACC in a statement today said Petroleum Nasional Berhad Petronas has become the latest entity to sign the pledge to reaffirm its strong commitment to become a corruption-free organisation. According to MACC Chief Commissioner Tan Sri Azambaki, Petronas has successfully carried out its anti-corruption initiatives by fully complying with all the directives issues by the government. This includes the establishment of the Integrity and Governance Units and the Organizational Anti-Corruption Plan. Tan Sri Azam in the statement aided that these initiatives are important elements in ensuring that an organization has implemented sufficient measures in line with the corporate liability provision. The pledge reading and signing ceremony was led by Petronas Group President and Chief Executive Officer Datu Tengku Muhammad Taufik Tengku Aziz and witnessed by Azam and Petronas Chairman Tan Sri Baki Saleh. Malaysia is on the road to recovery in terms of headline economic numbers, but Finance Minister Tengku Datuk Sri Zafrul Tengku Abdul Aziz has warned of risks to the recovery amid an uncertain global economic outlook. He said the numbers speak for themselves, as Malaysia had a strong first quarter this year with gross domestic product, GDP growth of 5%, and is on track to achieve a GDP growth of 5.3 to 6.3% in 2022. Tengku Datuk Sri Zafrul said Malaysia's trade performance has also remained resilient, maintaining its growth momentum, as trade data showed double-digit growth for 16 consecutive months since February 2021. Following the systematic reopening of the economy, continued expansion of internal and external demand, and the reduction in unemployment, foreign investors appear to be more confident in Malaysia's prospects. The minister noted that all these data, not to mention the return of traffic jams and pack e trees, suggests that the country's second quarter GDP bumpers may be strong, which will further validate policies that have placed Malaysia on the right track towards recovery. Tanku Datuk Sri Zafrul also stressed that the risk of the new COVID-19 variants and sub-variants remains present and Malaysia, together with the rest of the world, must be ready for the next global pandemic and may need to focus more on preventive rather than curative measures. The Ministry of Tourism, Arts and Culture, MOTEC, has given an assurance that no element of discrimination is allowed in the tourism profession. Its Deputy Minister, Dato Sri Dr. Santara Kumar, said more employers are now accepting workers, regardless of gender, location, race or language, when conducting recruitment sessions. Commenting further on the matter, the Deputy Minister also urged young people to change their perception of employment in tourism and make it a career platform for the future. Datuk Sri Santara said this after visiting the 2022 Tourism Career Fair at Dataran Sungai Melaka in conjunction with the Magic of the Night 2022 programme. He also said youngsters should seize the opportunity to start a career in tourism, which is always growing and this 2022 Tourism Career Fair can be used as a starting point for those who want to work in the tourism industry, such as the hospitality or aviation. The three-day 2022 Tourism Career Fair starting yesterday saw the participation of 15 employers with 1,012 job opportunities on offer covering five subsectors, namely hospitality, land transport, highway construction, air transport and trim parks. Of the total of vacancies on offer, 906 of them offered a monthly salary ranging between 1,500 and 2,000 ringgit, while 106 positions offered successful job seekers a basic salary of more than 2,000 ringgit per month. The price of building materials, including cement, is expected to drop in the near future. Senior Minister of Public Works, Datuk Sri Fadilah Yusof, said this would help ease the burden borne by contractors who are implementing government projects. Elaborating further, Datuk Sri Fadilah said he understood the situation of prices of building materials is now recovering after the price of steel started to fall, while only the price of cement is still high. 
However, he expressed confidence that the cement price will also stabilise in the near future. Natuk Sri Fadilah said the government has undertaken various approaches to help contractors who are faced with increase in the price of construction goods. One of them is the implementation of the variation of price VOP, with the Ministry of Finance having already approved the price reduction of four items, which includes the price of steel. Prime Minister Datuk Sri Ismail Sabri Yaakob previously informed the government to add 11 more building materials in the implementation of the VOP to help the contractors in addition to ensuring that projects can be completed on time. He said it has brought the total number of building materials in the VOP to 15, including cement, bricks, as well as walls, glass, mixed stone, ceiling materials, roofing materials and others. Chief calls for global nuclear peace on the AS crisis with the potential for nuclear disaster proliferate. UN head Antonio Guterres calls for disarmament while taking part in a memorial to mark the 77th anniversary of the first atomic bomb attack in Hiroshima. At an annual memorial, Guterres warned of the risk posed by crisis in Ukraine, West Asia and the Korean Peninsula as he described the horrors endured by the Japanese city. Around 140,000 people died when Hiroshima was bombed by the United States on 6 August 1945, a total that includes those who perished after the blast from radiation exposure. And today, the world is in danger of forgetting the lessons forged years, 77 years ago. Almost 13,000 nuclear weapons are being held. Stockpiles are being upgraded. And the common thread of potential nuclear annihilation runs through geopolitical crises the world over, from the Middle East to the Korean Peninsula to Russia's invasion of Ukraine. It is unacceptable for states in possession of nuclear weapons to admit the possibility of nuclear war. The signals are flashing red. Before dawn, survivors and their relatives began to gather at Hiroshima's Peace Memorial Park to pay tribute to the victims. A silent prayer was held at 8.15 a.m., the moment the bomb was dropped. According to government statistics from March, there are now fewer than 119,000 officially recognized survivors of the two nuclear attacks. The United States remain the only country ever to have used nuclear weapons in conflict. Israel hit Gaza with airstrikes on Saturday and a Palestinian fighter group retaliated with a barrage of rocket fire in the territory's worst escalation of violence since a war last year. Israel has said it was forced to launch a preemptive operation insisting the group was planning an imminent attack following days of tensions along the Gaza border. Health authorities in Gaza said 11 people have been killed by Israel's bombardment, including a five-year-old girl with more than 80 others injured. The rocket fire and Israel's strikes were continuing today, risking a repeat of an 11-day conflict in May 2021 that devastated Gaza. The strikes come four days after Israel closed its two border crossing with Gaza and restricted the movement of Israeli civilians living near the frontier, citing security concerns. Israel has conducted a near relentless wave of often deadly raids inside the West Bank since mid-March in response to lethal attacks on Israeli citizens. Eleven people died and several others were injured when a Polish bus bound for Zagreb Verd of the highway in northern Croatia. Police spokesman said the accident took place around 5.40 a.m., adding the bus deviated and fell into a ditch off the highway. The crash occurred about 60 kilometers 40 miles from Zagreb. Ten people, including three children, died when a fire in Blotch, a house in the eastern U.S. state of Pennsylvania, 
among those killed when the fire broke out in early morning hours in Miskopec, a town in the state's northeast, were three children aged 5, 6 and 7 years old. The other victims range in age from 19 to 79. Three adults escaped the place. Rescuers worked tirelessly in Algujita, northern Mexico, in an effort to save the 10 workers trapped in a flooded coal mine. The rescue site that was initially visible to family and press has now been covered by plastic, wood, barbed wire and other elements. Sports, Malaysia achieves six goal target. Ini masanya untuk bersinar bersatu dengan semangat kesukanan dibawakan dari Birmingham, England. DC ke-22 memburu kegemilangan dalam misi yang lebih jitu dalam 20 jenis sukan dengan 238 acara sepanjang 12 hari sambutan setiap pencapaian perkembangan dan segala yang berlaku dibawakan untuk anda hanya di saluran RTM Raikan perpaduan dengan semangat kesukanan bersama RTM, penyiar rasmi Sukan Commonwealth Birmingham 2022. Malaysia achieves its sixth gold medal target at 2022 Commonwealth Games through gymnast Ng Jo E. Debutant Jo E dazzled her way to deliver Malaysia's fifth and sixth gold through ball and ribbon events in rhythmic gymnastics at Birmingham today. Jo E put on a delicate show in Arena Birmingham as she moved and caught the ball perfectly to wow the judges, scoring 29.700 points to achieve a gold medal target for the National Rhythmic Gymnastics Camp in the Games. Canada's Susanna Shahbazian had to settle for silver with 29.050 points, while Anna Sokolova of Cyprus took bronze with 28.800 points. The 16-year-old gymnast then returned for the ribbon apparatus, controlling the ribbon in such an elegant way to come up tops with 27.800 points. Scotland's Louise Christie finished second with 27.550 points, while Carmel Kalema of Canada came in third with 27.500. What was more interesting, Joey's second gold medal had certainly helped the national contingent to achieve the sixth gold medal target in the Games. Meanwhile, another national gymnast, Isa Amzan, failed to deliver a fine show in the Who final, resulting in her ending the event in seven out of eight gymnasts after scoring 25.800 points. At Sunwall Aquatic Center, National Divers Wendy Ng Yan Yi Nur Dabita Sabri claimed the silver in women's synchronized three meter springboard. Wendy Nur Dabita managed to stay consistent throughout all five dives to finish with 299.85 points. Australia's Madison Kenny Annabelle Smith, the bronze medalist at the World Championships in Budapest, recently took goal, while Margot Clay alum Mia Valley got the bronze in the five pair competition. In lawn balls, national pair city Zalina Ahmad and Ima Firyani Soroji finished empty-handed in the women's pair event after losing in the bronze medal match to New Zealand. Despite leading 12-11 at one point, the Gold Coast 2018 winners eventually conceded a 15-20 loss to Selena Goddard and Kathleen Inch at Victoria Park. The National Lawn Balls team contributed two medals so far, one silver and one bronze. The Football Association of Malaysia, FAM, will not only focus on individual aspects in the process to select the new coach for the national under-20 G squad, its president, Dr. Hamidin Mohamed Amin, said the process, headed by FAM technical director Scott O'Donnell, will emphasize on the overall coaching lineup, similar to that of the senior Harima Malaya squad. 
He is confident the new coaching lineup can rise the performance of the national junior squad to ensure the continuity of quality players in the national squad. Jadi pemilihan tu setelah kita berbincang di national team technical dan juga dengan dengan esko semua kita dah hampir mengenal pasti non individu eh. We have gone for the for the for good staffing technical this one. Uh, dengan uh, dengan ni semua tu tu enan same as a good for the because this our future national team. Uh, tapi tunggulah nanti technical director tengah final sikit tu to come back tapi dah hampir 70 80% insyaallah. Met at the 58 FAM Congress Media Conference today, Datuk Hamidin said the decision that would be announced latest at the end of the month was made in the interests of national football as the U23 squad will face a very tight competition schedule next year. Moving to tennis, world number one Daniel Medvedev continued to build up to his US Open US title defense with a 7-6-6-1 victory over Mio Mira Kejunovic in the ATP Hardcore Tournament in Los Cabos, Mexico. He booked a title showdown with defending champion and third seed Cameron Nori, who beat second seeded Canadian Felix Auger as Alumni 6-4-3-6-6-3. Ked Monovic, ranked 38th in the world and seeded 4th, got off to a strong start against Medvedev, who is playing his first tournament since bowing out of the quarterfinals at Mallorca in June. The Serbian, playing his third semi-final of the year, seeds a 4-1 lead, but Medvedev found his range and relentlessly pounded his way back from the baseline. He regained a break and swept through the tiebreaker against the frustrated Kijmanovic, who could find no answer as Medvedev powered to a 3-0 second set lead on the way to victory. Britain's Nori saved a pair of break points in the final game to grab his first win over Agu Elisame in five attempts and admitted Joe's previous defeats weighed on him. Nori would soon 17 aces from the Canadian. The Wimbledon semi-finalist sailed a forehand long on his first match point, then had to fight off a break point before he was able to celebrate a return to the Los Cabos finals when Ogu Alisano fired wide on his second match point. That concludes this evening's News at 10. Reminder of our top story, 50 million ringgit allocated for aspiring home food business. Don't forget to join us tomorrow on 12.30pm for the latest update. I'm Nurizamri, thank you for watching and have a wonderful weekend.